Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Until midnight tonight. Uh, listen, tonight, of course, there's the big uh, debates going on uh, over there in, uh, down there in Florida. And uh, I'm sure a lot of people are watching Moe's rather than listening to this. So what I thought I would do for the first half hour is summon up an old interview that we uh, ran once before. This was a, a video that was made by a, bar, a guy by the name of Art Wolo who uh, I've gotten to know over the years. He's known as radio's best friend. And I told him, well, I'm, Amer I'm radio's worst enemy. But he was going around to radio shows and videotape people doing their radio shows. And one of the times that he came and did my show, there were two times. One was in the studio, and the other time was in a remote that we were doing. Uh, and uh, it was at the Marriott Hotel in San Francisco. And it includes not only a remembrance here of Kevin Meany, who you will see, but also uh, one of the radio greats, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Larry King. So let's go back to 1991 and take a look at that for about the next half hour. That hotel doing a little road show and it's a live studio audience. And at the National Association of Bottom Feeders, uh, Gosh, you've been a good audience this morning. And this is a strange, this is a strange room, isn't it, Kevin? Kevin uh, Meany, ladies yeah, and gentlemen. Yeah, it's weird. It's definitely weird. And that fabulous Meany family, America's lovable TV family. That's right. And doing Who's off the air forever and ever? <laughs> it's Uncle Kevin, Buck. Kevin Meany. And who, who uh, uh, you, but do you have an HBO special? HBO special coming up October 19th. On, on HBO? HBO, 10.30 p.m. That's what spot on the dial. I don't know what channel would be here. People ask you that, but I, I can't tell you. Oh. It's 22 Could you where come I live. over to my place and tune it in for me? Uh, sure. Okay, good. And <laughs> Jeff Cesario. <laughs> Jeff Cesario, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, thank you very oh, by much. By the way, Kevin's at the other. Jeff Cesario, Tommy T's in, uh, in San, San Ramon. San Ramon. David Feldman, largely unemployable. You can catch me on every after a minimum cable TV show. You know, it's amazing. It's <laughs> It's amazing who you meet at this convention because already today, passing by me is the guy uh, who fired me at W at, at this radio station originally, and then another guy who fired me at WIOD in Miami. So that that Alex, hey, I got some news feel, for you. Don't, don't boo him. He still has to live in Miami. Okay, I think that's Alex. We're going for the hat trick. <laughs> then. All of a sudden, like, it's some kind of flashback in my life. A guy comes up to me and says, hi, hello, you remember me? And it was Bruce Williams, who's on uh, the NBC network. And uh, the reason I remember him is because we worked together at WMCA in New York. And a few years ago, I went back to WMCA in New York, and there was this picture that was taken of all the people at WMCA in New York. And it was like uh, me and Sally Jesse Raphael and Bruce Williams. And they had put me on the periphery of the picture. And I looked at all the other people who were on the periphery of the picture and said, I bet we're going to be fired in two weeks. And sure enough, two weeks later, we were out. One other person was in that picture, and here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Larry King. Morning, thank you. Do you, uh, thank you. Do you remember that? Do you remember that picture? No. We were all standing there with telephones in our hands? No. I but I, 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 I'll answer any other question, but that But question. it was amazing. You, Sally, Jesse, Raphael, I remember Bruce being, Williams. We, when, when we started on Mutual in 78, our first New York outlet was WMCA, but it was so uh, brief because we went over to WOR in about six months. I think we were on MCA six months, maybe a year. Yeah. And then we were on OR all those years. But I, I remember that. I don't remember posing for pictures with well, the phone. They put me on the periphery. Everybody on the periphery was out in two weeks. What time of day were you on? I was on, actually at that point, I had, uh, it was very strange. I was doing a show, uh, uh, I was doing the afternoons there. And uh, then Barry Farber lost 
the election. He was a for mayor. local talk show host for mayor and needed a station, so they fired me and hired him. And I told everybody they should have voted for him, you know. Uh, <laughs> and I lost my job. Whereas if he were mayor, so, you'd still be in New yeah, York. So by the time you saw me, I was doing part times there. Well, this is my, uh, you, you belong here, Alex. It's this a strange city, and you belong. <laughs> <laughs> Also, this is uh, what you're trying to say. Also, is my, only my this favorite is, city. Uh, this oh, is, uh, you know, I tell that to everybody. You go around the world and you travel a lot. And with CNN, we're all over the world. And people always ask, where if you could live one place, where would you live? That you're not living now, and it would be San Francisco. Oh, this is come just, on. Uh, oh that's right. Just suck up yeah, to them right you now, kiss Larry. A little more to yeah. Yeah. Suck up to who? I resent that. I'm so, who's here? <laughs> the mayor is here. I, uh, Herb Kane is here. Who am I sucking up to? I love San. This is this is a special. See, I think when you spend a lot of time here, you don't realize it, how special it is, until you go other places. Uh, like most Miami. other places look alike. You know, I feel exactly the same way. I don't live here, but if I uh, could move back, I would. I love yeah. the city. Great all right, town, all right. If I, well, I, all right, I feel the same way. Uh -huh. It's a great town. You don't feel the same, do you? I would like to move out of here as quickly as possible. <laughs> I, I think it's a backwater town. It's what, the sixth, seventh largest market? Eighth and Fifth. 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 I just feel like an amateur living here. For I really? don't feel I'm good enough to make it in New York or L.A., so that's why I hide here. And I think the people are stupid here, too, as a matter of fact. <laughs> no, you think it's a no-count city? I just think, like, it's, it's just nothing, zero. Why don't you try Des Moines? I think it's inbred. I think the only reason I'm, like, making any money in this town is because the people just have, don't have a clue. So, <laughs> Welcome to San Francisco, Larry. <laughs> Try being Jewish. <laughs> he is. You're Jewish too? Uh, yeah. Well, then Pittsburgh's a good town. <laughs> <laughs> I wanna, you know, uh, uh, I was thinking a minute ago that, uh, like, I'm very shy. When people are going to be on the show, I don't like talk to them ahead of time. I never do. You, you're the same way. I was going to ask you that. I, mean, I never plan and I never talk. I, I mean, the guests on television, they sit down about... We go on at nine, they sit down about two minutes to nine, and radio about two minutes before going on. I don't even like my producer to sit them down before I actually start talking. Because I don't want it, it's funny, but I feel that if, you, if, I, if I say hello to them, I'm, I'm breaking some kind of... Well, I, I'll, I'll casually audience. say hello, and a lot of times you know the guests. I mean, if it's a senator and you've seen them at lunch that day, and then you're sitting there with them, you'll... But I will never talk, ever, about what I'm going to talk about on the air. Yeah. Whereas I would never, if, if, I would, if I were on tonight and I'm talking about uh, Clarence Thomas, I would not ask the guest before we go on what he thinks. And I have no idea what I'm going to ask the guest as I'm introducing the guest. I, I, I've always worked that way for 30 years, is that as I'm saying, uh, my guest is Alex Bennett, I don't know what the question is. And then something happens. That's pretty much the way I work. I Some kind of been. chemistry happens. And that, uh, it's not a lesson. If I was speaking at schools, I wouldn't say this is the way to do interviews. But you have to do what's best for you. You have to do what's most comfortable to you, and that's probably true in any business, but certainly in broadcasting. Whatever you feel the best about is the best. You can't be someone else. I work off the top. You like working off the top? I, always, I always work off the top of my head, and I... Uh, uh, more, uh, because, mainly it because shows. I don't think that there's any... <laughs> it was a cheap ball <laughs> joke. I'm sorry. It's a great conversation, just talking about, you know, not planning anything and just... <laughs> yeah. no, we uh, bust our tails with jokes and stuff. You guys walk in and say they don't think of nothing. No, I never, I never prepare questions because I figure you're getting into a conversation. And then well, if, you're, if you are curious, you're going to be a good interview. Yeah. The, 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 whole, the whole secret is curiosity and ability to listen. Yeah. You got to listen because especially if you work that way, uh, you better listen because if you, if you run into opportunities with interviewers who don't listen, and I've run into a lot of them, you can have a lot of laughs. I, I was on a show in Dallas once called, uh, this is a true story, Interviewers Who Don't Listen. I was on a show called Good Morning what, Dallas. What would what, you say, Larry? What? Oh, sorry. Good morning. Close your eyes. Okay, picture Good Morning Dallas. Now picture the host and the co-hostess. You're right. You're right. You got him down pat. And the, the blonde lady was interviewing me. And she had five pre-printed questions that she was going to ask. And she was going to ask those five questions no matter what I said. And when I was on, she'd look at the monitor. And if the camera was on me, she would fix her lipstick. She would do her makeup. She just didn't pay attention at all. She just asked questions, and I answered them. And the third question was like, what makes a good talk show host? And then she would go back to doing her makeup. And so uh, the cameramen were in to me, and I was into them, and the director and everything, and we knew that this was an airhead who had no concept, uh, was not listening at all. So she asked me, what makes a good talk show host? I said, in my case, 
being employed by the CIA is a big help because uh, they, they get me guests and I give clues and these clues are heard by agents around the world. And then they can blow up munitions dumps. And then her next question was, are you married? <laughs> That's the non-listening host. So you got this whole theory about how to, uh, how, to, how to run an interview. Have you ever had it go wrong on you? Well, there's no perfect interview. You know, you do the best you can. You ask the best questions you can. You listen the best. Your job is to bring, elicit the most you can out of a guest. I, I don't use the word I when I interview people. I is irrelevant. There's no place in the mm. interview, I don't think. My opinion of your movie is immaterial. It's your movie that counts. The guest counts. Sure, you can goof. I, I, had a, I did a whole two hours once with the president of uh, Apple Computer, and uh, we talked about the founding of Apple and how he got to be president, and I never asked him. He got hired by the, the original founder and fired the guy who hired him. He yeah, wound up being Scully. president of the company, Scully, and fired Jobs. <laughs> I never found that out till the last phone call. Ask why I didn't ask that, and that never came up. Sure, you're gonna, you're gonna miss things. That jumps out in my mind. No one's ever done the perfect interview. But I love, I think the first thing is to love it. I love the exchange. See, like right now, I'd like to be asking questions of everybody here. I would like to do a show where the, the curtain opens and that's where we all learn the guest. I don't care to know the guest. I'm, I'm exactly the same way. I like exactly that. The same way. Uh, uh, but you uh, guys are very much alike. <laughs> I'm out for his job. Mm -hmm. Don't tell him that. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> now, uh, uh, but the, the um, who, you know, I'm not saying that, I don't want to put you on the spot on this one, but the fact is that some people, no matter how nice they are, no matter how decent they are, sometimes they're just terrible interviews. Yeah, well, they're then... Really you, terrible. They are. So some I'm, people are not... I've got to ask you who's the worst. Most, well, most people who go on, on shows are pretty good. If you're going on CNN tonight, on a show that's going to be in 102 countries around the world, you're probably a pretty good guest. The producers have talked to you. They know that you certainly know the subject pretty well. I mean, they can't make you fiery if you're not fiery. You want four good things in a guest. You want passion. You want a sense of humor. You want an ability to self-deprecate yourself. You want an ability to place the person listening in the person on the air shoes. Put you on. Sinatra's the greatest guest there is. He embodies all those things. I've done him a lot. Every time he comes on, he's three. It's hard to get, but he fits all those things. Now, the classic is the guy who doesn't. The one-word answer the person who doesn't want to be there. I had a terrible time with Damon Wilson of Sanford and Son. I have a tough time with Robert Mitchum. Mitchum is a guy who gives you one word answers and, and makes everything so simple that he won't think in the abstract. And if they won't think in the abstract, then they won't take you beyond what you ask them. So if you ask Robert Mitchum, explain your concept, how you, how you view a role. You're gonna take this job, how do you view it? He said, I read it, learn it, do it. <laughs> I said, that's it, that's it. What about working for John Huston? He was fine. Uh, compare yeah, directors. Yeah, yeah. I just do what they say. See, then I, after a while, you don't know if he's putting you on. I, was I asked him what he thought of Al Pacino. He said, I've never seen his work. What do you think of Robert De Niro? Don't know him. <laughs> now, <laughs> after a while, you got no, 48 hell. questions there. Yeah. But sometimes you can take a guess, it's a true story, take a bad guess and make him good. And that's when you feel good and it's like a comic when you go on stage, I do a lot of speaking around the country and I like to work comedically, so I, I tell stories. And sometimes you'll go up and it's not working that night. Nothing can always work every night. And the greatest kick to the comic is to have it start bad and then win them over. Have a bad first five minutes and then by the end have them cracking up and then you feel you've accomplished something. And with an interview, I had a guy on once in Miami at WIOD in That's those studios. There's an organization called the Aces. Aces are people who shoot down five enemy planes. If you shoot down five enemy planes in a war, you're an ace. It started in the United States, but now it's international. There are North Vietnamese aces, Soviet aces, German aces, and they're a social organization. They meet, and they have an international convention, and they shop talk. They talk about war, and they're all fighter pilots. They're all individualists. They've all fought against each other. Many times they'll meet, and they find they were in the same battle against each other. They're a really extraordinary organization. You have to shot down five enemy planes. In one year, the aces had a convention in Miami. And we happen to have an ace living in Miami. And the Miami Herald found this guy, and they brought him, and they asked him if they were doing a feature on him. They're following me around. He comes to my radio show. And I was on from 9 to midnight, and he was the last guest from 11 to 12. We didn't take any phone calls. I just did interviews. I didn't like phone calls. I like long interviews. So he would come into the, he comes into the studio. This is an ace. He shot down 11 German planes in World War II. 
I shake hands with him and his hands are sweating. I said to him, hi, and he goes, hi. And he sits down, I know I'm in trouble. His mouth is dry, this guy is scared. So my first question to him was, uh, why did you enlist, why did you choose the Army Air Corps? He says, uh, I don't know. I said, what do you like about flying? It's nice. Now, I'm three minutes into the show, and I'm out of questions. The guy is totally panicked. There's nothing left to ask him. He's told, and this is an ace. So what I did at that moment was, I went to the moment, and I said to him, are you nervous? And he said he was, and I asked why, and he said because he didn't know who was listening. He had a fear because he was on the radio and he had no idea who was listening. I said, do you mean to tell me if there were a plane in the back of this station and enemy planes came overhead, you would not be afraid to take that plane up and go fight them? He said, not at all. But you're afraid of this, afraid of not... I said, I'm afraid, I would be afraid to go fight. And what happened was we took the talk from being an ace to fear. We started talking about fear. And in 20 minutes, I created a monster. 20 minutes after 11, this guy is doing things like, we dove out of the sky <laughs> at 4,000 feet. Through the clouds, the sun burst. I could see the edge of the airplane gleaming off the side of their tongues. I saw the fierceness of their... By 12 o'clock, they had to carry this guy out of the station. I made him show business. Can you stick around a little more? Yeah. Larry King's with us, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm Alex Bennett, and this is a live studio audience here at the Marriott. In San Francisco, here at the National Association of Broadcasting Convention, Kevin Meany is with us, Jeff Cesario, David Feldman, and Larry King is here as well. Yeah. Wanna, you know what I gotta say is difficult? Interviewing an interviewer. Sure, because they do the same profession you do. That's why a lot of people think, boy, if I'm gonna have a good convention, if I've got doctors, I'll get a doctor to interview them. That'd be the worst, because a doctor ain't gonna be curious. Yeah. The thing that makes an interviewer good is that he or she is curious about a whole body of things. And one of the things you're not curious about is interviewing. It's exactly what we're talking about now. You're not curious yeah. about radio because you know radio. So you're not going to ask questions about radio style because you know radio yeah. style. That's why often if you see sports events and uh, Sandy Koufax quit doing baseball because he once was on with, with uh, Bob Gibson and he found himself... Bob Gibson had just pitched a no-hitter, and Koufax was explaining to Gibson what Gibson did. Yeah. He wasn't asking questions because he wasn't curious. So that's why it's hard. Now, you're a big sports maven. Big. And I it, love sports. Did you always want to basically do sports? I thought I wanted sports? to be a baseball broadcaster. I, 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 would, I wanted to be Red Barber. I was a kid, and I used to listen to Red Barber and Russ Hodges, who later came out So here. where did it go wrong? I mean, what, what's I went like? to Miami, and I started. And you I went to I, Miami. I, yeah. I, was in, I love Miami. I spent 20 years in Miami. I started in Miami. I, I, my first day on the air was in Miami, and I thought I'd be a sportscaster, and then I got a show like this. It was at Pumpernick's Restaurant. I was doing a morning show, and the owner of Pumpernick's, Charlie Bookminder, liked me, and he liked my style, and he said, would you like to do an interview show in our restaurant every morning? And it had no producer, and so I had no training to interview guests. We had no guests booked. I would take people right out of the audience, and authors started coming in, and that show caught on, and Bobby Darren came in, Jimmy Hoffa, Ed Sullivan, Danny Thomas. They just dropped in. They were never booked. It became a coffee clutch scene, and the Miami Herald did write-ups on it, and it caught on. I got television almost immediately. I got a, a nightly television show, and I was doing both, and I've done both all my career, and I knew early on that that's what, that was a niche. If you can interview well, you have a special niche. A lot more sportscasters than interviewers, But and I some, liked it. At some point in that career, it fell apart. In 1970... One, I, 72, I lost both jobs. I had outspent myself. I was forced into bankruptcy. I was living on an ego trip. And then I uh, did some writing and came back on the air in 75. And then in 77, Mutual had this idea for a national radio talk show, which no one thought could work. In fact, I even doubted if it could work. But I moved to Washington, and that show caught on. It was, it was the right time, because AM radio was in trouble. AM was starting to fade. Yeah. FM was coming up, and AM stations we're starting to scrounge and look for things to do, and talk was one of the things that AM can do better than FM. Do you think that down period made you appreciate what you got now? Oh, yeah. The best, the best thing that ever happened to me was losing work makes you appreciate work. For example, the best thing that ever happened to me in my life was having a heart attack early. I had a heart attack in 87. Well, I Some people have all the luck. <laughs> yeah, I gotta try that. <laughs> well, it got me to stop smoking, lose 30 pounds, be conscious of what I eat weight conscious. I just passed an insurance physical that shows I didn't, didn't even have a heart attack. 
So that, you know, so sometimes you can make adversity terrific. You can make adversity work for you if you use it. In other words, if you take the down yeah. period and make it up. In fact, everyone I've pretty much known has had major down periods. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and absolutely. The, the down period helps you when you're, you don't learn anything when you win. You learn a lot when you lose. So Don Shula told me once, he's really right. I, 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 I've had a theory during my life is you hang out with losers and you learn about losing. That's why I hang out with Feldman, for instance, as an example. Well, guys who lose a lot tend to drift together. Jack Parr told me once, you know, people, he'll walk into a restaurant and there'll be six or seven television hosts sitting in the corner saying, who is he? They're losers. <laughs> I mean, if you sit and worried about guys who make it, and there are a lot of people in the radio business yeah. who have a losing mentality. There's something about radio. I don't know what it is. Yeah. There's a lot of guys, no, they're really, they sit around and they just get up in the morning depressed. They're going to hate the general manager before they meet the general manager. See, who they, would that be? <laughs> <laughs> who would we know on this dais? I'm as happy as I've ever been, damn it. Have you had that kind of life, Alex? I think for a while, yeah, but not now. I You're love my now. general manager. You love your general <laughs> well, manager? Wait a minute, this is San Francisco. I have to ask that twice. He's been You tested. love your general manager. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. No, he's, <laughs> <laughs> he's, he, <laughs> No, I, 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 like, I like, love the job. I love this audience. This is, this is, well, this is the young, best part vibrant. Of it right this is a here. vibrant, great audience. I owe everything I have today to them, and I'm going to get even with them for it sometime. Also, a lot of nice ladies here. Oh yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There are there are rewards to this job, huh, Alex? Uh, it's a nice job. I got into it for the records and the women, and I got a real nice record collection now, and I'm happy to have it. So Why do these comics stare at you with such admiration? Do you really worship Alex? Is I'm he exhausted. No, we're just, we're out. <laughs> I, got, I did a set morning. at 545 this morning, Larry. <laughs> so I opened guys, the show. These guys are your fans. No, we're afraid of them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the king of comedy here in this town. And Larry, great. I gotta go, guys. Glad thank you, you very much. Larry for King, ladies Alex. and gentlemen. Thank you, Larry. We'll be right back. Are we on the air? It's sort of like the heart. I'm Alex Beth. This is a live studio audience right here at the Marriott Hotel in downtown San Francisco here at the National Association of Broadcasting Convention. Kevin Meany, television's lovable Uncle Buck. Thank you. Who's Cancel. off the air forever? Cancel. But does have an HBO special coming up uh, next month, this October month. October 19th. October 19th, called Kevin Meany. Get that puss off your face special. And uh, next to him, Jeff Cesario, I'm actually a, a failed yeah. pilot at CBS. I'm actually television's lovable Uncle Tanutes. Would be my... <laughs> and he's out oh, of Oh, so state. you know Danny Thomas. Yeah, that's You're correct. at the other uh -huh. cafe. Hey, are there How about that glass coffee uh, top uh, table? <laughs> no. Is that true? I just hope it we use true. coasters. This is why I talk to somebody who works through. I'm at Tommy T's, yeah. NBC Kevin, Specialist Holiday. In San Ramon, you are at the, the other cafe. Feldman isn't working. I told my mother about the glass top coffee table. She said, well, I hope we use coasters. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody gets that because nobody knows what we're talking about. Well, Danny would like to uh, get a... I, I don't really don't want to say you it. You don't want to stick around for our, our reviews. No. Because you always argue with... I always argue with this man. I appreciate discourse. Mm -hmm. So, please, stick around. Okay. All right, I will then. Ladies and gentlemen, who are you going to review today? We'll Here with see. our movie reviews uh -huh. is Michael Snyder. Uh -huh. Yeah. Good morning. The entertainment oh, that's your name. The entertainment Michael Schneider. Schneider. brought to you by the punchlines here in San Francisco uh -huh. and in Washington. Oh, let me just ask you one question. Are you uh, before the plug or after the plug? Are you hyping plug? the punchline? Did you did you ever they, they put did time. you ever put down acts from the punchline? Why certainly I'll do that today. No, you yeah, like. don't. I try. All right, go ahead. All right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Brought to you by the punchlines here in San Francisco, where you can see Kip Padada, James Wesley Jackson, and Shyama, and out in Walnut Creek, Don McMillan, Alex Reed, and Greg Burnt. And I got to tell you, folks, if I seem a little groggy, I've been partying all night with Bowie, and uh, it's been a rocking good time here at the convention. Uh, smoking the crack pipe? Oh, uh, have you God. A lot of crack smoking here you know, at the as a matter of fact, convention. Iman does all the, uh, the copping. She does the copping, and David does all the smoking. And it's a groovy thing. It's a beautiful thing. So anyway. Cop and, uh, this is what happens when you reach and, the top. And Bowie smokes the crack. It's a beautiful thing. Uh -huh. He uh, said it. I'm just... Uh, no, I... David, he's a great guy. Just kidding, Dave. Um, Barton Fink opens today. Uh, have you seen this thing yet, Kevin, down south? 
In La La uh, Land? Where no, the movies no, are free I haven't seen it, no. Life is Easy. Totally cool, totally bizarre film. The Coen Brothers, the guy that did, um, they did Blood Simple, Raising Arizona, and Miller's Crossing. And this is all about a, uh, a playwright in New York during the 40s, played by John Turturro, who is great, really tremendous. And he um, decides to break down and go to Hollywood, make some money, write a few scripts. And it's like the nightmare that happens to him, the living nightmare that happens to him in L.A. John Goodman is in this thing from Roseanne and, and other uh, well-known work. And he is great. Best performance I've ever seen him give on screen. John Goodman plays uh, a traveling salesman, lives next door to, to the playwright as he's trying to break through his mental block. I would suggest, you know, if you're into this sort of... Uh, so it's the, it's the, it's the feel-good hit of the fall? Not quite, no. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's the feel-demented hit of the fall, okay. actually. So uh, I would recommend it highly. It's a wait in line for me, my kind of movie. Barton Fink. And, um, you That's know, uh, I would also suggest <laughs> that uh, Freddy's Dead. Promises, promises. The final nightmare. They told us that, but I, I really I have a hard time believing it. They wouldn't let us see Freddy's Dead, the final nightmare. So it really doesn't matter then? No, not say. particularly. I, I don't know. Maybe I'll check it out. Maybe a bargain matinee for you Freddy fans. Robert Englund is back. Maybe for the last time? Maybe not. I don't know. And um, for you uh, foreign film lovers, the story of boys and girls, um, directed by Poopy Avati. Poopy Avati. Poopy Avati. That's not a name you want to associate with. Let's bring him on out here. Poopy Avati. <laughs> Stand up, Poopy. I don't miss a Poopy Avati film. I don't know about you guys. Not a, not a bad movie. Yeah. Topo Set Poopy. in 30s Italy. You know, period piece about a, a marriage about to happen between a rich guy and, and a poor girl. Or uh, maybe a rich girl and a, and a poor guy. I, I can't remember. It was Italian. Robertson it was Italian. Thing. Italian. I don't remember. What do you got in video, bud? Uh, in video, the only thing I'm going to recommend... I Number 246. Right, we're, uh, we're on fourth, our... A limited edition, 4,000. It's worth money someday. Each sleeve has the uh, Star Trek uh, uh -huh. insignia on the little uh, uh, protective cover. It's a little booklet. anniversary Trek box. 149 bucks. Oh, man. 100 bucks if you buy it on videotape. But you it's know, all five movies. $30 go to Leonard Nimoy's ears. They actually now have residuals. The ears themselves do. Um, what have you seen lately you like, Kevin? I'm curious. Have you seen any movie uh, you like? Michael, I'm not part of this uh, little presentation that you're doing here. I'm, I'm bringing you, you into know. it, babe. I don't want to be brought into it. I okay. don't want to be a part of your little game here. My little game. You know? Wow, I sense I, hostility. I, but I, I really hope uh, that things work out for you, and maybe sometime uh, you'll move on and be a member of the Regis and Kathy Lee team. <laughs> if I'm really lucky. Because I think you'd really work with them well. Do you know those guys? Mm -hmm. Have you cohabited with Regis and Kathy Lee? Uh, did you ever do their show? Yes, I have. As I did their show. Yeah. Is it true? Follow me on this one. Mm -hmm. Sure. Agree with me. Mm -hmm. Before the show, she comes into the green room with the baby, with Cody, mm -hmm. and tries to sell it for whiskey. Am I right or am I wrong? <laughs> that's true. Wow. I heard that's true. Mm -hmm. Well, if Michael agrees with you, I can't agree with you. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Give you the good stuff in the last five minutes. <laughs> this... I was on T I did have a TV show. This is what I'm left with, this thing here. 19. You know, 18. Kevin, they uh, canceled Alex's TV show and erased the final episode, so there's no way it can end up in the Museum of Broadcasting. What was uh, the name of that TV show? Here's Alex. <laughs> oh, really? i never forget that final episode. We all kind of glommed on to one another and hugged each other, like yeah, yeah, Sue Ann yeah, and Ted, and yeah. he cried and said, I cherish you people. We're talking about the last Alex Bennett show on KSU. And nobody has it on tape? No. Let me just mention, because we give them five free plugs for listening to our radio station, the Burlingame Cycle at 1111 Burlingame Avenue, the largest Klein dealer. How's your Klein? Mm -hmm. On the peninsula, they're offering rock the shocks installed on any, yes, on any new bike for 275 You think I'm going to do a commercial off the air? I didn't know what you were doing. 1992 bikes are arriving, so we can make room for all the 99. So we can make room. All the 1991 bikes are priced to blow out, <laughs> including uh, including Trek, Bianchi, and and Giant. And uh, trade-ins are always uh, welcome. And uh, this week, say Alex Bennett can't ride a bike and get a free T-shirt with any purchase. That's that's Bur Burley Game Cyclery, our latest merchant of the week just for listening at work to Live 105. Wow. Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before.
Anyway, uh, that's what it used to be like when we did our show in San Francisco. See how much better I was than I am now? Yeah, that was much better, much better. Let me give myself a little more volume here. There we go. Open up the lines. Uh, nobody's watching, really. Yeah, they're all watching that fucking debate. Uh, the, the, the fucking debate. Yeah. Um, I have something I'll, I'll read to you in a, in a moment uh, that I wrote today. Uh, but uh, we'll wait till we get some people here calling the program because uh, I need to um, I need to uh, get some callers first. See, because if I read something or I start in on something and then people are calling and I answer the things, I also have to like bring them on the screen and do the things here that I have to do. Whoa! Whoa! That's loud. That's loud. Boy, your ring was loud there, uh, 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 Phil. Uh, there's yeah. Phil. Yeah, there's Phil. Yeah, there he is. I, yeah. I didn't do anything to I make know, it loud. I know. I, I tried to figure out how to turn that bell off so it doesn't ring on the air, and mm -hmm. I can't find a way to do it. So. Oh. Ah. Well, uh, yeah, that, that was a good interview, your Larry King interview. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it was sort of a uh, uh, preparation for how your guests on the ramble should act. For instance, ask, ask me a question. Well, wait a minute. Let me see here. We've got to get Charlie Wallace here right. into the group. Wait a minute. Hold on. There we go. There's Charlie. Hi, Charlie. How are you? Yeah, what, what, what were you going to say about getting people into the group? Oh, no. I, I said it was a really good preparation for the participants of the ramble. So, uh, for instance, uh, you, you know, you're interview was uh, uh, about, uh, you know, guests and, uh, you know, getting the best out of them. So mm -hmm. ask me a question. Why are you such an asshole? <laughs> because. See? This one. <laughs> <laughs> Try another one. Okay. Why is it you're always an asshole? <laughs> I like it. <laughs> so, you know, that, isn't that, uh, you know... That's the antithesis of, uh, of a good guess. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. Actually, what I love about that, people didn't notice this, but if you watched it, what I loved was Kevin Meany with Michael Snyder. Oh, they were he, at you know, each other's throat. He throat. absolutely has, over the years, or yeah. I mean, <laughs> he's dead now. Not Snyder, but yeah, Snyder Kevin, Kevin Meany. Um, he, uh, over the years, anytime he's been on, was on the air with Snyder, just hated him. Yeah. Just hated him. I, I noticed him. that. Uh, and uh, I wish I had the time that he, he really went after him for trying to do a Sean Connery impression. Well, uh, and, and it was just is, relentless. Is, is, what? is that where you got your uh, love of uh, Michael Schneider uh, or your attitude uh, towards his uh, I don't know. Work you know, don't, a, don't ask me why I have him here doing his movie reviews he was i actually listened to the movie reviews on this thing he was better then than he is now he now he's changed a bit huh well he hasn't changed he a hasn't bit, but changed you know, his coat either his jacket no but part jacket. of the part of the reason is that you don't give him any straight lines you, you just sit there and go okay okay next i just want <laughs> to get it over with it's on a friday afternoon i've got things to do you know and uh yeah i'm just you don't feed them anything. Right, you know? right. So anyway, today, you know, it happened today with, to me. Uh, we're still what? waiting to put somebody up, up, up there. Wait a minute, up, up there. No, I didn't know. I there didn't we turn go. Up that there. <laughs> up in there. the number one position. In the number one position. We need to fill that. Okay. Anyway, uh, today I woke up. I'm and, glad. And I've been feeling crappy, you know, for like yeah. a, two weeks. And I woke up today, and I come in here, and I start working, and I go, I'm not tired. My, I, my breathing isn't labored, you know. Uh, I feel really good. The air conditioner. Yep. I because, bet you the old one was minute. blowing some shit into no, the room. No, 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 that wasn't it at all. No. It didn't no. have a filter, no. and you got I the then, power? I then, later on, because I didn't go out into the front of the apartment, because we closed the door to the hallway, mm -hmm so that we can keep all the air conditioning in there, okay? And then I have a new air conditioner in here. And I was feeling great. I went out to get something to eat, 
And all of a sudden, my breathing starts getting heavy. Uh, uh, yeah, apparently, the air conditioning is filtering out pollen. Yeah, wonderful. Y you know, and now I, I, when I go to the bathroom, I start feeling heavy in the chest. And I come in here for, after a while, getting this air conditioned air, I feel much better. So. Uh, does the left arm hurt? No. <laughs> no, well, I have that whole thing, you know, with the with the yeah. with the echocardiogram. I'm yeah. my heart. My heart's the last thing that'll go. I think, at least. I, I didn't know you had one. All I know, years ago, there was a guy by the name of Jack Berry who was very famous for having run a show called Twenty One, which was a game show. Is that, that the one that caused, uh, was yeah, phony? That, that was the thing they made the movie about and everything. Okay, uh, and 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 they wanted to do the Joker's Wild, and he was a producer of game shows. Anyway, he goes to his doctor. His doctor puts him on a, uh, a treadmill, and he treads his, himself to death. You know, getting the heart rate going, and they're doing the EKG and everything. And the doctor looks at all and says. Man, perfect. You're just, you're, you're aces. You're terrific. And he goes downstairs and he walks across the, the 57th, 59th oh, no. Street into Central Park. And as he's walking to Central Park, he drops dead of a heart yeah. attack. So, well, that's what, a nice spot. so, what the good are those tests, okay? Yeah. You know, tests probably caused it. Probably. Yeah. Um, I want to read some. Well, is anybody else going to call? If somebody else will call now, I'll, I don't want to read this until somebody calls. Oh, well. You don't like us? No, I'll, I'll read this anyway. This is something I decided to write today. And uh, I just so happens now I know how to put a copy of it up on screen. Oh, good. <laughs> Two tomatoes, one you, orange you, juice. You, you guys can't see it, but this was my little uh, thing that I wrote. It said, Dear NBC... Uh, let me start by saying I've been a lifelong leftist, which I still am after 79 years. So these comments aren't from some right-wing Trumpophile. That said, I have to complain that I am appalled by your presentation and coverage of the all-too-early Democratic debates. Today, one of your commentators described what went on on last night as a show, and that's the problem. You've been treating this whole thing as a show and not as a part of an important political process that it is. Leading up to it, your commentators were like pregame football show, uh, like a uh, pregame football show, giving odds and discussing strategies. Add to this was uh, the uh, add to this was the set for the debate. Uh, oh, was the set meaning the thing they? Put up for them to do the debate. Podiums. The set for the debate, which was so overdone and lit that one has to ask how seriously you were taking this as part of a political process, or were you simply using this event to advance your position in the news spectrum? And then there's the question of commercials. Commercials have no place in the political process. If you really respected what you were doing, you could take out two hours without trying to make a buck out of it. Oh, I'm sorry, you had to pay for the garish set and the flying down of your entire news staff to go on the air and flack the event. We're in a fight for our lives to maintain the core values of this country. To treat it as a sideshow, as you did, is shameful. And uh, that was my little thing. I know what thing. they're going to say back. They're not going to say anything. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're going to get yeah. a letter. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Mr. Schwarzman, uh, your opinion is important to us. Please, uh, <laughs> uh, we value your viewership and thank you for writing. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, let me see here. Also, I have, I think I can go to this, okay. Yeah. Um, let me see here. Let me go over to uh, my Facebook page. And uh, we can uh, take a look at that. And so I got, oh, I really got a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, response to it. Look at that. Look at that. Uh, oh, look at that. Look at, look at all those folks. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. This goes on you and on and on. We were listening to you. Huh? No. You thought we weren't paying attention to you on Facebook. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't. <laughs> so, but isn't it wonderful Facebook. that I can now put my, um, put it, put uh, stuff off my browser onto the, uh, 
and I'll throw my screen onto the thing. Anyway, that's uh, that's. Uh, isn't that what uh, that guy uh, that calls the show from Marin County uh, was doing with his three cameras and NDI? What do you mean? Uh, uh, the other night, uh, he. Oh, uh, I, I think I he might have been. I think he might have been doing that. I just haven't I haven't put in a thing to make it capable for me to do this, but I'm doing it uh -huh. now, and it, uh, it works okay. Anyway, uh, that's uh, that's what we got. Okay, let me see here. We need another caller. Uh, the, you know, tonight is going to be like pulling teeth. You know. uh, isn't the inter isn't the uh, debate over? No, I, I, it's not over till uh, eleven o'clock our time. Oh, okay. So I, I got up just at an opportune uh, moment. Yeah, uh, did you watch it? Uh, yeah, I had the uh, the video from the debate, and I had your uh, interview in my ear. So uh, you know, I was listening to you, and I was listening to the. Uh, uh, debate. Uh, Kamala Harris uh, got in a few good digs. I think she uh, did very well tonight. Yeah, you know, I mean, if personality and and getting those sound bites in is what makes you a winner in those situations, I think she did very well. I, I think uh, more than that, I think that what she did is she put herself on the map with a yeah, lot of people. Yeah, uh, you know, the the thing about the busing, the thing uh, the thing about. Uh, uh, you know, uh, not playing with the person next door because she was black and, uh, you know, these types of things. I think personalized her, and then uh, she used her uh, situation as a uh, uh, prosecutor and a uh, uh, attorney general in California. She mm -hmm. tried to get some creds there. Uh, you know, just looking at it and not, you know, not based on the message, but based on how I think she did. I think she was probably the standout there. Uh, I think she definitely was the standout. I mean, from what I saw, I didn't see all of it. I only saw yeah. about 45 uh, minutes of it. But she, what I like about her yeah. uh, is she's snarky. She's really... Yeah, she went after Biden. Yeah. Uh, and, but she's uh, really Biden, snarky. Biden looked meek. Yeah, she's a take-no-prisoners uh, person. And um, I think if, you know, if we, if we talk about you know, there's a there's a cosmetic factor, and there's also the factor of how can you take on Trump because that's who you're eventually going to be taking on. I think maybe she's got the goods. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, yeah, she could probably do a good job of debating Trump, and I think she'd be a strong candidate, much stronger than some of the other ones that are on the podium. If he started hovering around her like he hovered around Hillary, she'd just turn around and say, "Hey, get back to your seat." Yeah, hands yeah. in the air. Yeah, <laughs> hands in the so, air. Yeah, yeah. But um, uh, you know, because uh, I still look that back. Woman Williamson. Uh, what was her name? Williamson. Marianne, Marianne Williamson. Mary, yeah, I didn't. I didn't. You know, I don't care for any of the points that these people are making. But I thought she did a decent job. She just doesn't have the looks. She, uh, no, she's a. She's a. She's. A, she writes books of like a, of yeah. a religious nature. Uh, really? Yeah, no, yeah, I, yeah. Uh, and then. Um, uh, yeah. You know, so, some of the other ones were pretty weak, but Biden was a lot weaker than I th uh, thought. B Biden. And Bernie just had the same old story. I, I, well, I, I am going to have Medicare for all. Well, no, I think <laughs> I think Bernie came out okay, though. I think he no, he, he did fine. He stated he's what got he, his, he's got yeah. his story. That's it. He he stated his case and he did a good job of it. Okay. Yeah. Um, and he seemed strong in Biden, his presentation. Biden seemed weak. Yes, and absolutely. Biden seems old. You know, Bernie doesn't seem old. Bernie looks old, but he doesn't right. seem old. You know, the way Biden raised his hand, if he was on the ramble, you yeah. know, it was like a very meek uh, hand raise. Yeah. You know, he I wasn't mean, like me. I, I, think, up I, kind of I guy. think tomorrow we're going to find that uh, Biden's stock is going to go down Yeah. after this. I don't think uh, he, I, I think he was just. I don't think he did anything exceptional. Uh, he, you know, he, uh, he tried to he tried to uh, bang out the Obama uh, uh, thing and just saying that I'll be four more years of Obama, right? Uh, if he lives that long, but yeah, I think I think uh, I think um, uh, Bernie came out as we expected him to, and I think that he held his own very nicely. Yeah, he's been telling the same story for thirty five. Well, years. I think what he has to sell. He does do a good job of selling, you know. On the other hand, you've got to be willing to buy. I mean, right. he, uh, there was um, 
Um, what did I, I heard uh, somebody today on some show going, some conservative show. I think I was over at Newsmax, and they went, well, who would want to, you know, who, who, who would want to get government uh, uh, insurance uh, instead of buying it? And I'm going... Well, they just, are going to buy it. Well, wait a minute. Every, every wait a minute, one of those guys it, it just, on the stage... No, what I'm saying is just about everybody would yeah. say that they would much rather uh, have, have... Hey, you've got Medicare now. How is it I hurt? got Medicare, but my Part D... Uh, I'm getting a PPO. I'm I'm done. Oh, no, no, I know, uh, I know you. Part, but Part D is an entirely different situation. That was something they created to help take care of and the, pharmaceuticals. And the other twenty percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the other twenty percent. Well, no, the other twenty percent you go out and buy. That's not part of the Medicare program. You I know. Go, I'm getting. You go that out and you buy. Get you also you, the drugs. You, you get United Health. Yeah. Right. Right. You know now. Um, with my union, it only cost me two thousand dollars a year for that for both Marjorie and myself. If I were to get it from United Health, it would cost me somewhere in the neighborhood of four to five thousand dollars. Well, I'm, I'm talk, I, I was talking to the guy today. But wait a minute. Let me, let me get back to what yeah. I was saying. Yeah. Uh, it, 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 they were questioning. Well, would people really not want to be able to pick their insurance company? When you look at what people are paying for insurance. Mm -hmm. uh, no, they would much rather have a plan that would give them everything their current plan gives them and not have to pay for it, maybe pay a little bit more in taxes that wouldn't amount to as much as they're paying more for the insurance. Get what I'm saying, Phil? Yeah, yeah. but I don't uh, accept the premise that they're just going to pay a little bit more because Phil, I think they're going to be Phil, paying a lot let's more. Say, uh, how, lot how much does it cost the person? No. How much no. does it cost people today to get uh, an insurance plan, say per year, uh, ten ten to uh, fourteen thousand dollars. That's for one person, like right. myself. If I wasn't my age and I couldn't get right. Medicare, it would cost me close to fourteen thousand yeah. dollars. That's why you, you want a job because many times right. they will help take care of it, although you pay into it anyway. But Here, don't he, get sick. No, but here's the point. Here's the point. Don't have to use it. Yeah. Here's the point. Uh, uh, you would be paying far less in added taxes to pay for that than you would in paying for that insurance. And by the way, that insurance that you get only takes care of 80 percent, okay? Yeah. And it's usually a deductible. Uh, right, a deductible. The Obama, right that's exactly what I was going to say, Charlie. Uh, the Obamacare, for instance, you had people paying... Uh, you know, three hundred, uh, four hundred dollars a month. So it was a lot cheaper. But if they got sick and they needed to use it, they had, in many cases, thirteen thousand dollar deductibles that they had to pay out of pocket before well, they here, got one here's penny. Here's the here's the problem, Phil. And the problem with Obamacare wasn't Obama, and it wasn't the intent of Obamacare. It was the way it worked itself out with the insurance companies. Right. I mean, the insurance companies were the ones getting greedy on this whole deal. And in order to make the thing go, some form of it go, he had to agree to certain stuff. Uh, it, the fact is that Obamacare is a compromise. M Medicare for one. all, Medicare for all is not a compromise. Uh, Phil, yeah, but Phil, some is better than nothing. A lot of people, not, there were like 30 million people that got health insurance under Obamacare that had zero before well, that. I, I, you had Steve, to pay 100 percent. Steve Forbes says that if you have transparency uh, and you're able to know what these things cost and you can shop around, then you have competition and the prices will go down. No, they don't go down, though, Phil, because all these insurance companies collude with each other to keep the yeah. prices at about the same po the price point. I, you know, you can't well, tell me. That shouldn't be allowed. I'm not even Phil, allowed to do Phil, that. Phil, Phil, I know, Phil, you can't tell me that if you go to United and you ask for insurance from them and then you go over to who's another one, Aetna, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. that you're not going to really be quoted the same price. Well, uh, the you know, that progressive lady, she's always saying that. Progressive? Uh, you know, the, no, progressive isn't a health insurance. Fit. I know, but you, you know how they. No, no, that, no. But, but that, what's the all I'm saying, all, all, I'm, all I'm saying is none of these health insurers, uh, um, they do collude with each other. And the only way you get cheaper insurance is like, for instance, a good example would be my union. 
Um, yeah, because they have bargaining power. They have bargaining power. We've got, uh, what, 30,000 members or something like that. And, you know, uh, whoever the insurer is, I think we use Aetna, maybe it is, yeah. I can't remember, uh, uh, bid for it. And they say, how cheap are you going to get it for our, our people? Right, uh, but you got good insurance. I've uh, got, well, I've got my Medicare and then my uh, uh, supplemental is cost me $2,000 a year for both Marjorie and myself. And if I had a child or two children, it would not cost me any more than that. Well, that's, uh, uh, well, well, you know, know, and what yeah. it does is it, um, uh, I, I, number one, it, it takes care of a lot of my, that extra part of it. So I have to pay some deductibles, but nothing huge. And then I get the prescription drug plan, which I have to buy. We have to buy three months at a time of drugs. Isn't that a Medicare thing? No, no. Uh, because I was talking to somebody today. One of my friends was doing some research well, for Medicare, me on Medicare has a Part B, which will take care of your, your pharmaceuticals. I don't right, do that. for three months. I don't right. do that. No, you, the, oh. you buy for three months because that's the way the plan is. Well, I thought this was yeah. going to be, oh, okay, well... You know, I'm paying I'm paying about two hundred dollars a month for my drugs, so I'm going to have to pay out six hundred uh, every three months, and and then I go in and I get the bill, and they say, oh, it's a hundred and ninety six dollars, and I went, what? I said, is that for one month? They said, no, that's for three months. I'm saving well, two thirds off of my because of of the well, fact that I ha am. Same thing with my dental plan. Yeah. It, now, uh, for instance, my, my friend, his wife works for the Detroit school system, mm -hmm. and she has fabulous insurance, and my buddy Barry is covered under that insurance. Mm -hmm. And so he's the one that was using the Victosa, and he says, yeah, they give me this. They, they, they uh, all sorts of devices that he wanted. And I asked Kaiser for those devices and for that drug, and they told me to pound sand. That's mm -hmm. why I'm out uh, looking again. But uh, now you look at all of these people that are employed that have this level of insurance, and then you tell them, look, you're going to go, you can't have that. Bernie Sanders says, you can't have private insurance. It's going to be Medicare for all. And, and, you know, and when he gets done waving his hand, everybody's going to be on the same thing. And the level of coverage isn't going to be like what you have, Alex. is isn't going to be like what my friend Barry has. It's going to be like what I got what now. Mean, I'm, I'm, I'm getting the level of coverage I'm already getting. And, no, no, and, no. and, what, and, getting and wait a minute, and wait a minute. With United. Medicare for all, that would take care of 100%. I wouldn't have to pay the $2,000 every year. Except if they don't want to give you the stuff that you want. You what want you that mean? IBS stuff, right? No, well, no. I, the, the fact is that uh, Medicare... Under their medical, under their pharmaceutical plans, and, and all of these are the same way, will allow you to have anything you want, but you might have to take the ger generic because it's cheaper. Yeah, you're okay. cutting off Charlie's circulation. Level. Yes, yes, Charlie. <laughs> yes, Charlie. <laughs> He's having to hold a hand up now. <laughs> Charlie, you can just jump in because they, we, hey, we, only ha we only have two <laughs> people. Oh, don't, uh, there's, I don't know there, there's nobody up there. Okay. Yeah, I. Uh, I just want to point out that that people that have universal health care, like England and France and Denmark, they pay less than half of what we pay per person per year. But they also have the private, Charlie. That's what I heard them no, say no, on no, stage. No, 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 no. You don't understand that, Phil. In England, everybody is allowed to get national health. It's if basic, you want to, there stuff. are private doctors yeah, yeah. that, for a price, will 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 work with you. They don't do that well in England, by the way. Those private well, doctors. Yeah, but they're, they're talking about that the uh, basic health care is basic. That it, it's it's not going to be uh, the the level that you're getting what, now. What, what is the of, what is the level? Phil, what is the level? My my basic level, Phil, is Medicare. No, your basic level no, is my the Medicare is basic, but it's all the other stuff that you get. When what? you were with United, what? you what? were getting shit service. Now that you're with the union uh, uh, thing, you're getting much better I'm service, talking, much but better it, it only takes care of the 20% that Medicare doesn't take care of, but I get uh, Medicare takes care of its 80%, right. and I'm well, before, uh, very happy with it. 
Right. Before the 20 percent that United was taking care of for you, you were getting screwed because you were paying top dollar for it. No, well, I, we weren't. weren't getting, but you weren't getting the services that you're getting now. And so as a union member, if you couldn't have that second part, that 20 percent, which is really what was costing you majority out of pocket, you would Phil, have to. Phil, I wouldn't have government. to be paying for that other 20 percent. I wouldn't have to be having the what they call supplemental if we had Medicare for all, because Medicare would take care of 100 percent. Don't you no, understand? Medicare only takes care of 80 percent. No, but well, it, not it, no, Medicare the, for all. Not Medicare for all. It would take care of everything, 100 uh, percent. Uh, yeah, two like chickens and everything. No, no, but Phil, I'm, I'm telling you, that's what it's all about. The current I, Medicare system takes care of 80 percent, but if we had Medicare right. for all, if they're using that as a simplification of saying yeah. what the plan will be, but it will take care of 100 percent. I won't even have to pay $2,000 a year for the right. extras. I think what it's going to be is Medicaid for, for all. No, yeah. it's yeah. Medicare. Yeah, but if it's truly Phil, going to be more of the me. level of Medicaid. No, no, how do you know? I no, I'm I'm get, it's because going to be it's a government Are program. you happy with the Medicare you have right now? No. Why? Well, you only had it Kaiser. for a month. No, no, Kaiser is not Medicare. Medicare is a yeah. federal plan that pays no, your they, medical bills. Are you happy with Medicare? Uh, no, I have no. I have no experience with uh, well, the Medicare part. Well, I have only experience with the second part, which is Kaiser. Phil, Maybe you get Phil, an experience. Don't, don't you you'll see the difference. I don't know anybody that's on Medicare here in Arizona that, that would go back to their, their health insurance. I, I, I love Medicare. Uh, you know, it's terrific. And and Phil doesn't even know he's getting Medicare, but he is. Yeah. You know, and what they're charging you for at Kaiser is that other 20%. They're becoming your... your uh, you're a secondary, but you can go anywhere and buy your secondary no. if you uh, want to. Uh, yes, I could. Yes. But with Kaiser, your Medicare and your secondary is all used through Kaiser. You don't have no, no, the ability it, to. It, it goes through Kaiser because you're a member of Kaiser. But if tomorrow, right. let's say you want to leave Kaiser tomorrow. Oh, okay. I could just get the 80%. You anywhere. take your Medicare anywhere yeah. you want to go, any doctor who accepts it, which is most doctors. And uh, might I add that you then have to buy that 20%, which you were thinking about buying anyway. So why don't you just leave the fuck, uh, leave, leave Kaiser, go get some private doctors and uh, choose your doctor. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, I, but, uh, but, but, but don't blame. In November. But, but well, Medicare is making that possible for you. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, it, but it, was, uh, it was possible. I was paying $1,300 a month, Kaiser, prior to Medicare. I could have gotten uh, coverage from anybody for 1300 bucks a month. Phil, Phil, if you go and quit Kaiser tomorrow and you get a bunch of doctors, you know, you're a new urologist, new whatever, and you start going to them, and then you go get yourself a supplemental, it's not going to cost you anywhere near twelve, thirteen hundred dollars $1,300 a month. No, not, not because It's going to cost you alone maybe about two, in you, where you live, 200 to $300 a month. Uh, yeah, he's talking 180 190 for the yeah. platinum. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. best you can get. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I mean, um, maybe you're going to be. I got it. Uh, this guy uh, is the guy that represents a thousand carpet stores. But, so, because oh, I belong to a co op. Yeah, but okay, whatever way you're getting it, the fact is that your Medicare is going to come out of your Social Security, okay, at, at about $110 a month, okay? Yeah. And uh, this thing is going to be like another 180. It you may do better by just leaving Kaiser. And, yeah, and, I am. And, and going with Medicare. Why should they be getting your Medicare money? You know. Yeah. Well, that's that's what that's what's happening right now. Yeah. But uh, it was the easiest thing to do because my birthday was in June, uh, yeah. and uh, <laughs> it wasn't open enrollment time, and I didn't contact other it doesn't, places it doesn't to matter if it, me. it doesn't matter if it's not open enrollment time if you turn the age for medicare yeah uh you can join at any time during the year oh. that you know yeah everybody's telling me ucsf is the way to go and uh and you know that the it's a teaching hospital in san francisco and they say that the service that they get there is 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 fantastic but you have to get accepted and so I figured, okay, I'll just wait till open enrollment, uh, fill out their paperwork. Open enrollment has, no, has nothing to do with USC. 
Yeah, it was easy for me just to. No, but it sign has nothing to do with they the made it seamless. Yeah, they made it seamless. Yeah. 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 Uh, but uh, you don't have to be with them, you know. No. And and before you were going to them because that was your medical plan. Right. You know that was your insurance plan. And in case people don't know, it's an HMO, uh, which was started by Henry J. Kaiser originally for his employees. Mm -hmm. And it was free. Yeah. It was free. It was socialized medicine, first socialized medicine in California. Uh, I, 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 uh, my first car, uh, my father bought me a car when I first got a license. It was a Henry J. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't remember the year. I thought it was 49 but it was probably like a 52 or 53 and uh you know a little four cylinder thing henry j was sold by uh sears and it was the kaiser yeah, do you remember j. the kaiser darren oh yeah well oh, those are beautiful they had lips uh, on the front four slid in uh, yeah, yeah and they had, they had, they had lips on the front yeah yeah is anybody oh, else going to call because i'm getting very tired for some reason i wasn't tired last night uh, turn on the air conditioner I've got the air conditioner on. <laughs> I, 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 let Raise me, the let, pollen let, count. Let me turn up the. Uh, um, let me turn up the fan. Mm. You know, you, you can hear it more. But oh, uh, I don't. You know, I'm not really hearing it. I have a uh, uh, that swamp cooler on in this room, and yeah. do you hear it? No, yeah, no, oh, no. Okay, it's not. No. Uh, but anyway, we need more callers, folks. The debate is over with. You can call now. Okay. <laughs> So, but, uh, but let's see what else. But is what going I'm on. what I'm saying is is that a, a Medicare for all thing would mean that you just wouldn't you wouldn't need insurance. The, the insurance would be you're right, <laughs> you know. Which is uh, I I don't think uh, that there's anything bad about that. Uh, yeah. And oh, uh, look who's we got here. Yeah, we got Tony. Hold on a second. Let me give Tony. I'll give him the top slot here. Ooh. Oh, yeah, there he is, the vaunted <laughs> top spot. There he is. Yeah, right, right up there, folks. That's that's Tony right there. Oh, no. The if if he wasn't up there, could I do this? Actually, I'm having to look <laughs> off camera in the other direction. You know, from, I actually should put my picture over on the other side, and you guys on the other side, and then I could go like that, you know, and everything. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, on Drudge, it says, the headline there is Get Joe. And it's got uh, Harris and, and Biden and says, that little girl was me. You know, and she, she was starting to shed a tear. Who said who what? Uh, uh, Kamala Harris. Said what? Uh, uh, they were uh, talking about busing. Mm -hmm. And she said that she was uh, What's that? Who's that she bust? was bused and, uh, and that, uh, that, you know, she was the second girl in her town or something to get bused. And yeah. uh, uh, she says, that little girl was me. You know, you try to make it personal and well, try to call him a segregationist. <gasps> well, I don't, I, you know, I don't know that Joe was a segregationist. I think Joe grew up in a time when this is how you did business. You had to deal with these people because they were, you know, your, your cellmates in, in, the, con in, the, uh, in yeah. the Senate. Well, who, uh, Tip O'Neill uh, and, you know, Reagan, they got along, you know. And yeah, well, I mean, all I'm saying sides. is is that I, I don't hold what he said against him because I think that it was a time when, yeah, those were the kind of people you had to deal with, unfortunately. And, uh, you know, you didn't say, well, I'm not going to work with you because you're a racist. You know, I think it's so easy to call people racist and wait, 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 wait. Tony, and Tony, Tony, Tony was saying something. Oh. Yeah. Was Joe Biden from Boston? I was going to Google him. Maryland, I think. Del no, no, he Del was from Pennsylvania. Boston? Pennsylvania. I mean, Boston had a big, big, yeah, he, he was he was uh, uh, working in Delaware, but he was originally from Pennsylvania, and I think that's why he's going to he said he thinks he's going to be strong there. Well, that, I mean, Boston had a problem with the busing. That could be. I think. I think any of them are going to be strong. I think if the if the polls are any indication, there were five people on that dais tonight who could probably beat him. I I think though that Biden would be a bad idea. I, I yeah. What do you think, Charlie? Biden a bad idea? I agree. I agree with you. I think. Yeah. Biden's out of touch with the current Democratic uh, base. Do, do you yeah, find Do you find him a bit on are... Do you find him a bit on the doddering side? Uncomfortably so, yeah. I mean, you, Bernie's an old guy, looks old, but he's not doddering. Yeah. You know, he's 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 got all his 
his marbles. Are, he's got a lot of energy. He's yeah, well, you know, all Biden did uh, tonight, you know, that was maybe a little tough as he re leaned over to Camilla and said, let me smell that hair. Yeah. <laughs> did he do that? No. No. <laughs> no, no. And it's not pronounced. It's, it's, it's not pa it pronounced. Camilla. 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 Uh, Cam uh, Camilla. <laughs> Imagine yeah. he walks around mirrors. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she. Uh, you know, I I like Camilla Harris. What do you think, uh, uh, Charlie? I'm not asking yeah, I like you. Yeah, I like her too. She's my. Uh, She's my third choice. I think uh, okay. Bernie's my second, but it's getting close. Okay, I mean, but who's really your like first choice? Elizabeth Warren. They said she won. You, you know, you, I, look, yeah, I got to tell you, is. Elizabeth Warren is smart, but she may be too smart for the room. Okay, mm -hmm. I mean, we're we're talking about electability here, and we're talking about electability. We're talking about uh, cosmetics, how you look, things like that. Uh, she is just a little too, if you thought Hillary was off-putting, you know, uh, uh, Elizabeth Warren's the same way. Now, if you want a woman, Kamala Harris, I think is easy on the eyes, yeah. smart, expresses herself well, gets her point across, you know. I think the problem with Bernie is that... Uh, uh, I don't know if all of America would embrace Bernie. No, I don't think America embrace, embraces socialism. No, I don't and think that, that's it. And, I don't think that's, that's what it. He is. I think that if a if, if a true social if, if a true socialist comes along and runs, uh, all he has to do is his biggest job is just to educate America not, into not being frightened of socialism, since in most cases they've got socialism already. Uh, do you think uh, who's who's your mayor uh, in New York? De Blasio, uh, right. De Blasio, or the guy at the I, end of the of the, of the right. group last night? Well, yeah. well, he did a decent job. Maybe he's okay uh, last night. Yeah. But uh, when he went down to, I believe it was a detention center in in Miami, mm -hmm. he said in Spanish a quote from Che Guevara, and I guess he pissed off all of the uh, Cubans in uh, in in Miami. So uh, they, he shot himself in the foot. Um, yeah. yeah, who knows what he said? I, I don't know. Uh, no, well, they, they translated. They said it was um, uh, it was some famous Sheikh of our quote. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, uh, well, you know, I mean, I, I think that uh, I, I don't think that he has, uh, uh, de Blasio has a very good chance yeah. at the present time. Maybe. My guy, Andrew Yang, no tie. Yeah. He didn't wear a tie. That's fine. That's well, fine. That's pretty, I think that's pretty good. Then you, you, look, you right? like him because he wants to buy you off. Yeah, a thousand bucks. <laughs> Come on, Oprah. <laughs> but, you know, you know he's he's that. he's the Oprah of candidates. You get a thousand dollars, and you get a thousand dollars. Well, you know, and that was his, his standout his standout thing. I mean, he's got. I've heard his, him I being know. interviewed, and he has a lot more going than this thousand dollar thing. And yeah. When, when they asked him. You know uh, about you know uh, you know give me in two words what you do and it was he went to the thousand. Who was the guy? Out. Who was the guy on the end who doesn't open okay. his mouth when he talks? He talks like this. Uh, oh, that's Sewell. Sewell. Oh, yeah. Really? Who is he? Who the fuck is he? He's a congressman. There's a guy up there named Bennett I never heard of yeah. before. Uh, I just like run it well. I said, Holy moly! Do you think Sewell <laughs> had a relative. wig on? Sewell? I don't know. I I have the, to look at him again. Man. I'd have uh, to look at him again. Yeah. Yeah. Look, you tell me what but, you I mean, it's a wig. But, I mean, Sewell should give up after tonight. Yeah. Uh, Bennett, what about Hickenlooper? Bennett should give up after tonight. Uh, Hickenlooper should give up after tonight. Uh, who else should give up? Williamson? I, I think, yeah, I don't think she's got a chance. I think, if anything, she, 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 if she wants to keep doing it, keep doing it for ego. Cause, uh, what about uh, Buttigieg? Uh, Buttigieg, I... I don't think, I think tonight he didn't lose anything, but he didn't gain anything. I think yeah, he would have gained a lot. They went after him on the cop thing, too. Did they really? Yeah. And what did he say? Um, uh, he, um, I'm, a, uh, they, I'm asking uh, you, you, the they, guy uh, I go the, to a quote uh, the, for. The guy quote. Sewell said that uh, Buttigieg should fire the police chief. And mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, there was a little bit of uh, uh, grumbling and uh, he didn't want to say that he would. Mm -hmm. uh, 
you know. Well, so he I mean, just he said he was doing things to make the police more uh, uh, accountable. And uh, yeah. then Hicken, uh, then the guy from Colorado, and I think that's Hickenlooper, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, said, uh, well, I've been doing that since I was governor of Colorado. I put in this, I put in that. Yeah. Uh, uh, but uh, but uh, uh, Buttigieg didn't, uh, didn't come back strong on that. Mm-hmm. Let me see here. We got Kevin who just called. Let me uh, put him on there. He would be Hog Rider. There he is. Okay. And we put him in there. And uh, let me see. He was on an. Oh, he was already. We don't need to put him anywhere. Well, here we'll just get him, get him there. Just don't okay. put him down. Uh, no, we, we already had him <laughs> in a place. I could have just left him there. Hi there, Kevin. How are you? Good evening. Good evening. By the way, I'm going to go to my screen, which you guys can't see, but here's here's what Drudge is saying tonight. Uh, get Joe, that get Joe, and then that little girl was me, Camilla, and he's doing everything to like put these people down, which I don't, oh, you know. Uh, here's the poll. Mm -hmm. uh, did you? Uh, I, I didn't. It doesn't seem to have a, a, a winner yet. I, I haven't done the vote. Did you see the poll on Drudge? Uh, let me see here. I can go who, right who to. Won? I can go to it right now. Let me see. Let me pick one. Uh, let me pick Kamala Harris. Oh, by the way, Kirsten Gillibrand should get out she, of the race too. I thought she did all right tonight. No, uh, I think she's a cunt. Uh, let me see here. Who? Uh, Andrew Yang is it on the top? That's a, a Drudge. Uh, uh, really? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah there's a Drudge. He's uh, Andrew Yang is on top. Well, maybe he uh, gave Drudge's thousand this month. Followed by Marianne Williamson. Now you got to know these wow. are right wingers that are taking this poll. Yeah. Because yeah. I mean, and then Harris, and then Harris Biden. and Buttigieg, and then Joe Biden, and then Bernie Sanders, and then John Hickenlooper. Way down at the bottom, who who do I got? I got to vote again so I can see this. Uh, down at the bottom, I got uh, you got Kirsten Gillibrand. Yeah, yeah she right. she she should go and, home. And your yeah. brother Michael Bennett is uh, yeah. right right above her. Yeah, um, and uh, so that's that's uh, that's what uh, that was, that's what uh, Drudge is reporting tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Well, that's the people that go to Drudge that push the button. Yeah, right. It's, so yeah. it's it's not scientific at all in any way, yeah. shape, or form. Um, on the other hand, I ain't going to MSNBC tomorrow to see who won and who didn't win because I just don't like the way they've been handling this whole, whole deal. Trump won. Hmm? Trump won. No. He, he, yeah, what they're saying is, is that Trump took all the air out of the room with his tweets and sort of no, held no, himself no, in how the did, spotlight. How, how did he take himself out of the, uh, out of the I room? I am repeating what the people on CNB, uh, CSN, uh, CBSN said. I don't think uh, he did because I mean he can tweet all he wants to while it's on, but people aren't looking at his tweets. They're reading, well, they're watching the the debate. I guess there are some people that are looking at the tweets because uh, it uh, uh, the news people were saying well, that. Isn't uh, that isn't that a little isn't from, isn't you know, that a little rude, Phil? What while there's a debate going on to be uh, uh, tweeting and trying to take the air out of the debate. Do shit like that all the time. No, uh, no. four nights a week. What? <laughs> you know, when I when I talk to you guys. Yeah, you do <laughs> you it. Know? You do it. Yeah. So, but I guess it is okay. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Thank you for your letter. <laughs> Thank you for your letter. Um. Um. But uh, what did you think, Kevin? Did you watch? You must have watched the debate because you're calling us now. Yeah, I did. Well, yeah. I watched it. What did you think? Eh, it was, it got crappier as it went on. Mm -hmm. um, Who won, Kevin? Oh, Andrew Yang won because he's going to put a thousand bucks in my pocket. Every hey, time. I like it. You know, <laughs> and then I'm now I'm going to go out and have six more kids too. Right. Well, and and Tony wants it too. I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> At this point, you know, no. Um, I I thought. Uh, I thought Kamala Harris sounded pretty decent, actually. Yeah. You know, she came up with some good answers, didn't bullshit around. She uh, didn't sound half bad. Uh, Joe didn't sound half bad either, but he did, you know, kind of fumble in a few spots. It seemed weak. Uh, Bernie sounded like Bernie. Yeah. Uh, um, 
Kevin, was it you that is always talking about uh, robots and, and taking over jobs and things like that? Uh, yeah, I, I, I've spoken a few times about, you know, bots out here and a company a friend of mine's working for, yeah. But that's what Andrew Yang is all about. It's not just the $1,000. What he's talking about is that he's trying to prepare uh, people for a new economy that's going to be an automated economy. Yeah, and he's countering thousand dollars yeah. as a tr as a transition to. Uh, I don't you know, know where he comes up with a thousand bucks a month though. Why isn't it two thousand? Why isn't it uh, five hundred? Uh, because I don't think there's any way that America can afford the three point five trillion dollars that it's going to cost to give each and every person over the Listen, age of eight. Listen, well, I, I, I talked I, about it being a tax. Oh yeah, it's a VAT tax. Yeah. On no, he purchases. would he would add a VAT tax, is what yeah. he said. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, to pay to pay for this, and then he thinks that by putting this money in people's hands, they'll spend it, and it's a yeah. I would. Oh, by the way, trickle I, trickle up. Yeah, I just got yeah, this. I, uh, I just it. got this on my Facebook page. You remember Richard Johansson? Yeah. Oh yeah, I talked this to him uh, on Facebook the other day. I said, "Where are you?" And he says he was yeah. not feeling well. Well, it says, "Hey, Richard here. I'm diagnosed epileptic. Ep epileptic. Oh no. Yeah, been sick for a while. Get kind of tired in front of the computer and my meds. I follow the show and plan to call in sometime soon. Love the show and best regards to all of you, Richard. Well, get better, uh, Richard. Uh, will you? Okay." Yeah, I, I, I wrote him and I said, you know, we haven't heard from you lately. Are you okay? Mm -hmm. And, uh, and yeah, I, said, tend, I do that once yeah, in a while. Yeah, yeah. Well, because you're, you're a stand-up guy, Phil. Hey, no, I'm sitting down right now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so, I mean, I, you know, I think that uh, uh, what I was looking for tonight were people who weren't going to give me the same answers that I always want to hear. And I felt that Kamala Harris gave me answers that I you know, that were different, at least in the way they were presented. I found that Joe was just going by the handbook. You yeah. know, did you feel that way, Kevin? You look like yep. you're nodding. Yep. Yeah. Can I say something about Kamala Harris? Yeah. I thought that her answers were practiced and that they were meant to be uh, uh, sound bites. And that uh, she didn't really have any substance. I, I don't none think. Of, none of I, them have I don't any think substance. they're practiced as much as she has been out on the the stump, yeah. Yeah. and that she's found her voice, and she, and, and that she simply she simply was doing her greatest hits tonight. But she wasn't. Right. She wasn't doing the. Uh, it's hard to explain what Biden was doing, but it was like the same old, same old, you know, it's the things you're saying. We have to, Biden, it's it's a form of make America great again. Biden know. was defensive. Well, he was, he was going back on his resume a lot, too. You know, he was going back on, well, what, I've done this and I've done that. And, you know, it was all back to Obama. I, I thought yeah. the best, uh, the best question, I can't remember who asked this of Biden, but he said, when I was a kid, uh, I uh, listened to a politician who told me that the baton has to be passed to a new no, generation. No, that wasn't Biden. That, that, that was no, Swellwell. No, yeah, that was yeah. Swellwell, and then Biden came, came well, back. He, but he was, and he and said, says, I still no, got it. No, he said, the guy who said that when I heard it was you, Joe. And right. he, then he said, well, I still got it. But basically what this guy was saying, he was saying at one point out, that it has right. to be turned over it's to a whole new right. generation. <laughs> and now yeah. now you're telling us we, you know, we don't have to? You know. And if, if, yeah, if Joe was he smart, he would have said the torch is still lit and I got it. Well, that's he what he smart. said. That's what he said. Well, he didn't come out and he say that. He didn't say that. it's still lit. He says, I'm still holding on to it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he, he could have he could have gotten more. Uh, he yeah. could have pushed it back. In I, I don't think he had it in him. I don't no. think Joe Biden is, uh, you know, the gaff artist he was 30 years ago. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was kind of waiting for that, but he yeah, didn't. you know, most most of his speeches are um, not most of it, but a few of his speeches are either either stolen uh, stolen from Obama or that other writer, that English uh, guy back in the uh, in the uh, when he ran for president last time, and uh, and and borrowed some. Uh, I think there was a time when I would have voted for Joe, okay, and that maybe was about four years ago. Uh, I think four years ago was his time. I think he could have taken Trump on. He could have beaten Trump at that point. But I think he would have been better than uh, but, Hillary. But, but now he he just looks 
he looks doddering. Okay, he and, and 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 Americans when they're voting for somebody, they don't want somebody who they feel is uh, kind of losing it. You know, I mean, they are already, those veneers. We've all, we, we we've been there and done that with Trump. We don't need to do it again. You Trump's know. strong. It, did did uh, are those veneers on Biden's teeth or uh, could or be. they implants? They could be, but I have veneers so, down here myself. So yeah. Yeah. Well, no, because his look kind of phony, don't they? Do he's got false teeth? Uh, I think he's got veneers. You know? Really? Yeah. What they do is they grind down the tooth. I they... I have vermeers here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> vermeers. That's That's those expensive. So woman, a good, well, he has a good health. See, I have a That's woman with a golden earring right down here. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, vermeers. Oh, Tony says Biden has a good health plan. Sure. Well, he probably get free dental, right? I mean, we got to pay for everything. This guy gets. Well, you know, nobody, you know, nobody in this whole discussion talks about. Free dental, which is yeah. Yeah, very yeah, important. To go to her dentist anymore, which is very man. important. You know, one of the good things about my plan also is we have Delta Dental. Now, in most cases, Delta Dental, I had it at uh, Sirius, and uh, it was $1,500 a year. With my plan, it's $2,500 a year. And also, if you go to one of their dentists in network, they have to charge what Delta Dental says they should charge for that specific thing. So my implant is going to cost a total of $3,200 with the tooth and everything because that's what they say it's worth, and that's what, as a in-network dentist with Delta Dental, they have to take, okay? Uh, and I pay half of that. So that's why, I, that's, why, that's why I'm getting it. Otherwise, I'd be sitting here missing a tooth. I'm not Didn't gonna... you say you switched dentists maybe six months ago yeah. to Marjorie's dentist, oh. and it just so happens that that dentist was in program? Yeah, well, yeah. So when I oh, got the quote, lucky. they said, we will take whatever Delta Dental says we can charge for it. And they said $3,200, and you've still got uh, $1,900 left that you haven't used on your dental plan this year. So you're, that'll take care of half of the 50%, your, and then you have to pay your 50%, which will be about 1600 bucks. Nice. Well, I, I wasn't going to get a, a, an implant because they're like $5,000, $6,000. But if that's the case, hell, put it in. Yes, uh, Charlie. Uh, my uh, Medicare Advantage uh, does have a dental mm -hmm. plan, mm -hmm. but my dentist is not in it. And, you know, if you get a dentist that you like, you don't want to have to change dentist right. just because of your insurance plan. I, I understand. I'm, I'm going through the same thing. My dentist is a, is a friend of mine, personal friend. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't want to change. I'm happy with them. Mm -hmm. And uh, they don't take the HMO. So that's another reason for me to change to the PPO and get uh, some other kind of dental. Yeah, but, but you know, I mean, it... it, it a dental is very important, and nobody there. I mean, there wasn't one person. Yeah. They could have made some points by saying, "By the way, as long as we're talking about Medicare for all, how about dental for all as well?" Yeah, that was nice. You know, and I think all of America would have gone Not because fun. Americans have lousy teeth. Yeah, me, right. Well, I'm the English really... have Medicare for all, and they have lousy <laughs> teeth. <laughs> but they don't have dental. They don't have no. dental. No. Yeah. The, they don't the, have good meat either. Well, the, the, the thinking on that was if you have bad teeth, it's your fault. You know, if you get cancer, it's not. You know, but, you know what my dentist said, Alex? What? I don't know if he was joking or not. He said that bad dental hygiene could lead to cancer. Oh, yeah. The it plaque? could lead to heart disease. Yeah. Oh, that's what it was, heart yeah. disease, plaque. That's yeah. what it was, plaque, yeah. Yeah. And uh, serious infections, bacterial infections with yeah. bad yeah. teeth. Yeah. yeah, he said you gotta get your dent. You gotta get your cleanings once or well, twice. Well, I, I haven't had my cleaning in quite a while. I mean, they get it done as soon as they get this done. You know, so. I go three times a year because I'm a plaque maker. You know, I, I I make more plaque than most people. So I, I go I go once every two I go I go every, once every two years and they have to put goggles on me because it's spattering everywhere. <laughs> Bill's coming. Cancel my two and three o'clock. Yeah. This is a long one. <laughs> <laughs> but but no really we should we should talk dental uh, and we're not yeah, really. it should I mean, be part of the expensive. national discussion uh, because let's face it I mean I'm I'm going to use Tony as an example Tony had uh, terrible teeth horrible teeth I'm afraid to eat hot pretzels now why, why? So I can't eat the Bachman pretzels no more why 
Because I'm afraid my teeth are going to crack. I swear to God. What did you get? Why, why would they crack? Because they they move them. No, my teeth are brittle. I think I'm afraid to eat anything yeah. really hard. I really, I'm not joking about. Did you? What did your den- what, what is your what does your dentist say? He agreed. Because I had one time my tooth cracked in the back. I was. He says, "How'd you do it?" I was eating a hard pretzels. He says, "I would stop." You mm-hmm. think after it's another couple yeah. hundred bucks? Okay. Well, we'll feed you. We'll, we'll come over mom. to your house and feed you mush along with your mother. Anyway, you know, I started to have cracked. I had, and, I gave uh, a little banana cream pie before it's liver. I, I, I found, I I found that it was TMJ, and they mm. made me a night guard. Really? And uh, when I use that, it makes all the difference. Yeah, well, any, anyway, so uh, here's, here's uh, the thing is that, uh, uh, what was I saying? Uh, oh, about my bad teeth. Uh, your bad teeth. Y- you know, uh, Tony luckily had his uncle who had him fill boxes with hats. Uh, Thank God. But, you know, if you walked into some major company in New York, like let's say Bank of America, to get a job as a teller or something like that. With those teeth? You'd never Forget get it. it. I'd have to keep my mouth closed. So yeah. You'd, right. you'd never get it. And that's why dental right. is so very important. I mean, yeah. if, if people, if some guy misses a front tooth and can't afford to get it, a, a, you know, an implant and whatever to take care of that front tooth, he's going to have a very hard time getting decent employment. Yeah, unless yeah. he wants to get a job pumping gas as uh, yeah. Bubba. Yeah. So I mean, you really have to. These are these are things that have to be taken into consideration that we don't just don't take into consideration, and I think it's very important. That's okay. why, like you said, Alex, Phil should warm up to the idea of socialized medicine. We all have a basic baseline plan. Well, no, uh, he, I want to I want to get a set of Bubba teeth, you know, so that no. when a customer comes he in, is, go, he, he <laughs> is he is getting socialized. Don't you want him to pay the bill? Uh, 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 Tony, you lay a rug down. You'd he, be is, collecting he is getting socialized medicine it. though, because he's getting Medicare. Yeah. Uh, and and no, uh, I, I paid for it. No, no, it's still socialized it's medicine. Still socialized yeah. medicine. No, it was, it was, Phil, it was, it was Phil, a, repeat it was after a, me. It, 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 it's if, not socialized medicine. I paid it, for it. So it it's not a handout. Uh, hold on it's a, a second. It's not up. a handout. Socialized medicine <laughs> is not a handout. Is Medicare. It's, it's a hand up, Charlie. <laughs> uh, is Medicare socialized medicine? It uh, works. Medicine. Yeah. What side are you on? I'm so, just I'm just typing this into my browser. Com? No, I just typed it into my browser. Oh. Um, let's see here. Medicare and Medicaid. Here we are, Phil. Uh, uh-huh. Medicare and Medicaid are forms of publicly funded health care, which fits the looser definition of socialized medicine. Okay. So, uh, hey, you know, hey, Bernie, I'm ready. Come on. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. Medicare for all. <laughs> yeah. There it is. In case anybody thinks I'm, I'm lying. But I don't want to have to pay for it. Hey, but there it is. But in case to. I'm lying, right You're there. Paying for it now. Right there. Medicare and Medicaid are forms of publicly that funded health care. Money that we had to pay. Huh? They get it from you. Yeah. Yeah, you put into it. Yeah, I've been putting into it for a long well, time. Well, sure, of course, but it is it. Part of it is it's also taken sick. care that's of by your employer, and moment. part of it was sure. is also taken Wait. care of by the government. So. I'm the employer. That Medicare for all is actually cheaper than what we have now. Exactly. Uh, I, I not only, Charlie, I not only pay for mine; I pay for everybody else's too. Well, you're paying for everybody's now. If somebody goes to the emergency room you, well, and doesn't you, have here, insurance, who t- do you I'm, think pays for that? I'm going to tell you County. something. I'm going to tell you something that really sucks, folks. Uh, years ago, when I first started out in the business, when you would go somewhere, they would always say to you, uh, and they still say at jobs, we have a health care plan here. But in those days, you had a health care plan. You didn't pay anything into it. It was just a health care. It was part of the thing. It was, wow. it, it was, they couldn't get people to work for them if they didn't have benefits. I, I used to pay for Kaiser for my people. And, uh, and back in the late 80s early 90s uh mid 90s kaiser for you know my average person was about 150 dollars a month it was like 75 dollars a month for my warehouse because he was young and uh now you know it's gone up because of uh obamacare uh no not you know, because of obamacare mine has tripled not because of obamacare it's gone up because all of them have gone crazy it's been going up for years they've gone bad shit but let me wait hold on a sec so I, I then, you know, I, I never thought twice about uh, insurance. I had to pay for my own insurance when I was at Live 105 in San Francisco because I was self-employed. 
So I had to pay for my insurance, but it was what two hundred dollars a month. Big fucking deal, That's, right? You weren't covered by but, uh, SAG back then. No, didn't I, I didn't. No, that wasn't SAG. That wasn't a union station. I, no, but I thought. Uh, no, we had talked no, one time. No. And you said, "Hey, you know, uh, I'm getting no, insurance. Uh, no, if, if I'm joining SAG. But, well, no, but with SAG or AFTRA or something with with, with, with AFTRA. Yeah. Uh, what you had to do was make so much every quarter in order to qualify for the medical insurance under that. Yeah. And since I didn't work at a union station, I never made, except when I do so, like some television or some commercials or something like that, but I never got enough money to get their insurance. I did become a signatory to the union, my company, which then paid me, and we were supposed to get it. But then they said, oh, you can't do that because this is like a ruse. No, it wasn't a ruse. I wanted to be a member, my my business, to be a signatory to the union. Yeah, I anyway, remember that. Yeah. So I had a big fight with the union over that one. Uh, they've made up for it now. Uh, but uh, uh, it 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 I, I never made enough money in any given quarter to get the uh, the SAG insur- the after insurance. Here's yeah. the thing. That... As, as the years went on, I either was paying for my own or a station I was at was paying for the insurance. And, of course, when you're young, you never think that much about health insurance because, hell, you don't get sick that often, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, unless you're a kid with cancer, and then you're lucky, uh, you know, because you get to use the Bubble money. boy. Yeah. So, anyway, um, all of a sudden I'm working at Sirius, and they go, well, we have a health plan. I go, great. And they say, yeah, it's... it's uh, I think it was something like 75 bucks a month. Oh, well, okay. What a what, deal. What the hell? And then it went up to 100 and then went up mm-hmm. to 150 And then I got married, and now it was 350 I wow. mean, all of a sudden, this, this free medical insurance that I counted on wasn't free anymore. And by the way, there was a copay on everything. You know, and, and, and you had to take care of your $1,500 deductible before anything happened. So when you were through, you were paying a fortune every year for your insurance. Something that a company used to give, and some companies still do, by the way. Some companies still do have medical insurance for free oh, yeah. for all their people. I think Amazon, you work for Amazon, you work for Costco, you don't pay for your medical insurance. Hmm. You know, uh, Of course, Amazon can afford to do it since they haven't paid any taxes to the United States government ever. Right. So, yeah, uh, somebody on the uh, on the yeah. dais uh, mm-hmm. uh, was talking about that. Yeah. Uh, uh, which which one was? I'm it? getting to feel more and more guilty about going to Amazon every day. You know, mm-hmm. except you know I did get get the the uh, air conditioner from them and. Um, yeah. Hey, I bought a thermostat. Got delivered yesterday. Uh, from Amazon. Uh, hey, listen, I'm store. so fucking lazy. I want a bottle of aspirin. I order it from Amazon. <laughs> it's <laughs> cheaper. And then when it when it gets here and they say, well, you weren't home, so we couldn't deliver it, I then call Amazon and complain. Hey, uh, yeah. I have allowed Amazon to not deliver on the Prime a couple of times, and I'm supposed to get $5 credit. Uh, that would be automatically applied. No, it's not to the prime. It's not the prime. It's just it's not next uh, two day. Not delivery. next day, right? Yeah. You know. So you say, okay, are you willing to put it off? Uh, yeah, sure, I'm willing to put it off. Five bucks. I don't need this thing. Uh, when it comes, it comes. Yeah. And you know, I I have never gotten the credit. I thought it was supposed to be automatically applied to to my shit. Now I just say, yeah, give me it the next day. I, I don't, you know, screw these guys. They're not giving me my five bucks. Yeah, 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 and you know they owe me. I, you know, I've done it three or four times, and never saw never saw a dime one from these guys. Really, as a discount. Call them and tell them if you if you got it on your bill, they'll do they'll give it to you. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, oh, all right. Do they answer their <laughs> you phone? Just gotta or make they sure like that Skype? box is checked. At the well, end, you, you know what, you, what? What fucks me over is like the other day I got fucked over because I paid thirty dollars more for this air conditioner than I should have because. All of a sudden, I noticed that they had one on Amazon Prime, and they had, it wasn't up there the day I bought it, you know, and it was $30 cheaper. Uh, and um, so I call mom and I say, well, I, can you give me a, no, it's a third party that you're buying it from, so we can't do it. And I said, you used to, I, I believe they used to, they would match it, you know. You know what the worst thing is? 
my uh, girlfriend seems to have gotten uh, up into this uh, publisher's clearinghouse. And I told her, I says, once you fill out one of those things or you buy <laughs> something from those guys, they're going to inundate you oh, with yeah. junk mail. And every day the mailbox is full. You know, you could win. And, you know, it's, it's, and she's buying shit from them. And the shit that she buys is really crap. Well, you know something? Don't buy any of that shit. If you don't yeah. buy it after a certain amount of time, they will stop sending you the mail. Uh, these guys are terrible. Really? You know, yeah. Have, have you? It, it's. Uh, I remember Patrick talking about this pop off guy. Well, pop off. Uh, we, we, <laughs> we, 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 uh, I was I in on that. I used to restuff the envelopes and send them back their shit. I, I, no, I was in there with, with Patrick on that because we, we were talking yeah. about it. And this was on my old show at Sirius. And so what we had him do was answer all this stuff. And they kept sending him more shit, more shit, more shit. <laughs> you know, prayer <laughs> cloths and so on. And he'd never sent him anything. He said, should I send him some money? I said, yeah, why don't you send them a dollar, all in pennies. In pennies, yeah. <laughs> and then put it in their postal return envelope. <laughs> I said, because what will happen is It'll it will weigh more It bucks. will weigh more than right. the allowed <laughs> amount that they were paying for, and they're going to have to pay extra for the extra weight. And so he was sending back <laughs> pennies all the time, hundreds of pennies all the time. <laughs> to pop off and costing yeah. him a fucking four. He and pop off kept sending him this shit. And one day, uh, I get the mail and I, it's a box and I open it up and it. Patrick has sent me almost everything he got from Peter Pop Off. You know, prayer <laughs> claws and, uh, you know, whatever. Yeah. So. Yeah, well, these guys only send you coupons. It, it's like that thing that they put in the, in the, uh, you know, for the closet system, uh, the the mailer. You know that, that you get every day, and the yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, you know the penny saver mailer. Yeah, now, that's another piece of garbage that uh, you get sent. But I didn't solicit that; they just put it in everybody's box. And uh, but this publisher's clearinghouse, they're they they're relentless. Yeah. No, no, there's no question about it that they're relentless. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you know oh, what the hell. Uh, you know what we've what we've got now is I just think it's time now that the government do something about robocalls. Yes. You know yeah. That, yeah. that we maybe the death penalty something like that. You know. Yeah. Uh, my my robo uh, robo killer has picked up because I have it set not uh, the there's a spoof where they spoof your phone number and it's one that looks yeah. similar to yours. Mm -hmm. Well, it was a customer. <laughs> You know, and they and they got my thing. Well, you, you know, this is this is spam. Well, here's what happens with Robo Killer, which I I absolutely hate about Robo Killer, and you can see I have it there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, is that they go like, for instance, block call six three one two nine zero seven four one seven. When I saw that coming through tonight, I just mm -hmm. went, "Don't answer." All right, right. decline. It was call. Marjorie. Decline call. No, because it's coming from, uh, I think it was like in Tennessee somewhere. And I know 631, that. 631, is that your uh, zip code? No. Your, no, no. Your no. area code? No. 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 Uh, so anyway, um, they, they then say, well, we successfully blocked your call. What do you mean you successfully blocked my fucking call? You didn't successfully block my call. I did. Well, did they tell you that it's a possible spam or something? Or No, they say blocked call, and then they take credit for it. Yeah. And I, it was a blocked call because I pushed decline. Well, I, I did a custom bot, and uh, I wasted this guy's time, and, and, he, and you can, he can talk into it. And he asked me if I was retarded. <laughs> you know, so I said, hello, this is Phil. Well, and then you know, the most, guy most of the time, here's the problem with the idea of, of RoboKiller and a lot of these things that will then play some kind of message over what is being said to you, okay? Right. Is that yeah. most of the time RoboCalls are exactly that. They're RoboCalls. There's nobody there. So you're not really annoying anybody, but what you're doing is you're making the company realize that somebody has answered the phone. It's a live call, yeah. What well, it should uh, do, what it should do is rather than play anything or even answer the call, it should have automatically decline it. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, Haya does that, doesn't it? I think so. I don't I haven't used Haya in a while. I got uh, them both running. I've got Haya and I got something else going. Uh, blockers. I've got a whole bunch of things here. They are the blockers. Okay. I have uh, Haya. Let me go to Haya. Probably I haven't updated it lately. Uh, let me see here. Let me go protect. Oh, I'd have to enable Haya one and two. Well, it is enabled. I have no idea why. Yeah, sometimes when you do an update on your phone, it. it Let's see if I called you, it'd probably block it too, huh? Maybe, no, not necessarily. Maybe not. You know, I'd give you my phone number, but I, then everybody else would call me who I don't <laughs> want to have call me. So. Yeah. You know, here, here. Well, here's. Uh, we like to send you a pin to verify your number. Okay, this is AT and T Wireless. Oh, enter your AT and T Wireless number. Don't you know that? Now um, AT and T has a spam filter, right? Okay, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Uh, enter my wireless number. Here we go. And the pin number is three seven. Um, oh, come here. Come here. Come here. Three seven. Nine four eight four nine four eight four. Oh, that's the one-time pin. Yeah, to eight verify. Four. Yeah. Okay. All right. I did it. Wait a minute. Uh, uh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. I did it. Damn it. Well, I. It's all fucked. Yeah. Fuck you. I don't I, need it. I think this one is the guy that's that called me retarded. Uh. Yeah, let me see. Well, um, yeah, but, but the problem is, is now they got the now they got the ones that are in your local your local area, and they they pound you with your local phone calls. Yeah, I get them all day long from my local area code, and it looks yeah. like somebody. Uh, I'll tell you, one, one time right. I did get a call, mm -hmm. and it was intercepted, and it was uh, Mount Sinai Hospital telling me my doctor I had a doctor's yeah, appointment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I get them from the high school. Yeah, yeah. Kaiser got blocked. I actually had to put them in my. Uh, yeah. uh, the doctor was going to call me back for a consultation, and yeah. uh, it, it got blocked. And uh, what a pain in the ass to get back a hold of these guys. Yeah, so you and, you, you get, get screwed that way. Yeah, but if you put them in your contacts, then it doesn't block them. Right. Right. Yeah, but it really bothers you, you know it really bothers me if the government doesn't do anything about this and I've gotten ones that you guys say you've gotten saying this is the Social Security Administration. Yeah, I got that oh, one. Oh yeah, I got, I got the, one the Microsoft. With, you know, we got to redo your well, visa. We've got to redo your your well, student forget, loan. Like, okay, okay, yeah, you do my student. Okay, loan. let's let's forgive all of those for the government being lax. But once it's somebody claiming to be the Social Security Administration, yeah. isn't that a violation of federal law? Yeah. Are you think they're uh, offshore? Oh yeah, and they can't do anything about oh, it. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 So offshore. there's nothing they can do about it. Well, no, they're they What they're doing is they're passed a law saying that the phone companies have to block them, mm. and they would know when something like that was happening, you know, yeah. because uh, the number you get on your phone is what's called a spoof. It's not yeah, really right. the number they're calling from. That's right. That's yeah, why just... sometimes it looks like it is local. You know, right. here sometimes I will get six four six, or I'll get the two one two, or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, and it's it's still a, you know it's still spam. Luckily, some of these spam things I have say this is potential spam. Okay, right. And yeah. if, but if sometimes if, you don't know, so you answer it. If the number is out of town, uh, outside of San Francisco, nobody's calling me. You know, I'm to the point where I don't answer any anonymous. If a person's anonymous, they can leave a message. And yeah. I'll call them back. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, uh, anonymous, I, I went to my contacts and I put in anonymous and I blocked anonymous. Uh, Tyson Acosta says he worked for Costco and you do pay for your health insurance. But at least it's available to you at a reasonable price. And right? you get two of them that Tyson's. tape together. Yeah, right. Yeah, they're two of them. <laughs> you got to buy three at a time, yeah. Well, that was my old joke about I was going to. And my wife and I are thinking of adopting a child, so we're going to Costco. But you have to take two of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. But anyway. They got a special uh, plan. Yeah. I still is. Do they charge you membership for Costco still? So I think they do, right? Well, oh, yeah. yeah. That's the only way. That, that's how Costco makes their mo their money. Yeah, that's their profit. Is the, that's the, their profit. Yeah. I pay. Uh, you can pay. I think it's sixty five a year 
for most people. Yeah. And then it's, I pay 100 because I get... 100 and something. I got the black one. Yeah, I got the black one, too, because then you get money back at the end of the year that pays for the card, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, but You uh, ever try to get in the door without having to show them your card? Oh, I've walked in and I've just kind of flipped it. And they, well, they, no, no, you know, it's a game. Like, you know, can I, can I get in without having to show? You know? <laughs> I, can just, I can just show my wallet and yeah. I'll walk through and, and they don't, yeah. yeah. Here's the thing. Yes, you can do that. Anybody can get in without yeah, showing the card. But try getting out yeah. without showing the check, card. Yeah, check yeah. Out, yeah. Well, no, you go in, you get all the free samples. You don't have to show the card to get the free samples. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get filled up by eating a little cube of cheese here. Well, you, you do and that. A piece and a piece of sausage of off. A piece of salami there. Yeah, that, that, you know, when you're done with the appetizers, then you go for the hot dog and the soda. The, the biggest, you know? the biggest gone up I've ever known <laughs> was uh, was Michael Snyder. Yeah. I took him to Costco. He went to every one of those stands and ate whatever they were selling. Yeah. I went, have you had a full lunch now? I'm selective. Uh, you know, I mean, I won't just take anything. Well, it's well, not like... Some of them people go like around and make three rounds around the damn I place. want the sausage. Yeah. You ever notice the people that kind of push in when they got sausages and, oh, yeah. and, and stuff like that? You know, <laughs> They're excited. You, it, it, yeah, you get these 80-year-old ladies that are blocking the thing, you know, waiting for the sausage. A to little. And the guy, all the way with the cart and everything. Right. The guy that's making the, the things, he takes 20 minutes before he puts them out on the thing. He, they make you wait while they yeah. assemble them. They just he don't put four or five you. out. Right. Yeah. yeah. You want some? Yeah, you're going to wait. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, he oh, takes here, one here we go. He sausage and makes it into 80 pieces. Here, here's, my, yeah. here's my email tonight from Michael Snyder. Mm -hmm. <laughs> May we do the usual at 12 15 p.m. Yeah. And then, I, sure, may I have it, another? It, then I always answer him back with something like, here, I'll just put the letter Y. <laughs> Do I have to? <laughs> and then he can figure out what I mean by Y. There we go. What's that? Yeah. Does it mean yes or Y? And I got to be around here, you know, whatever time. Why anyway. don't you just have him pre-record it and send it to you? You don't say anything anyway. You know, because he doesn't have the ability to do that. Well, it's time that he bought into the system. Huh? Uh, he can get on a, a, one of those Zoom recorders, mm -hmm. do the thing, make a, you know, make a, uh, a, a file, and then just email it to you. Really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, can he? What, 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 what are we getting? We're getting a little noise here. What is that? Air conditioners. I have no idea. It's not mine. No, it could be mine. No. No. Turn it off. Actually, this one's pretty quiet, to be honest with you. It's good. And it, it, it keeps the room fairly cool. It was really hot today. It was, Did that change it? It was, it was almost 89. I know. I was trying to work. Did, I did that uh, kill the sound? Kill what sound? Uh, the air conditioner sound. I still hear it. That sound, I don't know what that sound is. It isn't me. Yeah, well, I turn, I turn mine off, so... It, no, it's just... Turn mine off. Yeah, it's some kind of, you know, the, yeah. the Skype sound. Skype noise. Skype noise, yeah. Uh, but anyway, so, um, you know, I just, I think the debate tonight was, uh, uh, it was, it was okay, you know. I just, I just I keep saying, and I will continue to say, is this early, you know, and, and what's going to happen? Uh, I, I imagine we'll probably lose about five people after this is all over, maybe. Which Did you make, notice that they Which will make room for the other three who didn't get on. They, they were a little uh, discourteous in that, uh, you know, they were trying to talk over one another. Oh, they like were yelling me on Ramble. Other. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I mean, it was like Gillibrand was yelling yeah. and screaming over somebody else. Right. Oh, yeah. You know. Yeah, she was disgusted. Now, I hate Gillibrand. I mean, I, can I say this, folks? And I mean this only in the most professional sense. She's a real cunt. <laughs> I think she's attractive, you know. Uh, really? Yeah. Yeah. She's got that she's look. Yeah. She, she's the one who put it, it, made it life miserable for Al Franken. She's yeah. a cunt, but she's cute. <laughs> yeah. Well, I didn't like what she did to Al Franken. I felt that yeah, was... I did. 
<laughs> yeah, I felt that was, you know, Democrats eating their own, you know. Yep. And they're doing it again. No, they're not. Not on, really. on the on the on the stage. Well, no, they were arguing with each other, and 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 uh, you know, of course, you want a heated. Uh, uh, no, but uh, they had a chance to, you know, they only had a few minutes to make their point as to who they were and introduce themselves. This is the first debate, and you know, instead of doing that, they're trying to, you know, beat up on the other guy uh, to, well, to gain. Well, uh, but who created this 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 this? Uh, oh, it's a Trump. Death Trump, match. Yeah. No, no, I'm not going to say Trump. It's MSNBC yeah. created and the Democratic National Committee who created this death match tonight, you know, yeah. and and uh, they yeah. feel that they have to do that in order to survive it. I think what Kamala Harris did was I think she presented herself with enough dignity that she didn't really join in on that on that fighting yeah. on that. Uh, that's why she did all right. And and uh, I th Biden didn't. But then again, because Biden, I think, wasn't awake at the time. Uh, you know. The uh, Republican ones in in sixteen, mm -hmm. uh, fifteen sixteen. Uh, now they they were crowded stages. Uh, there were they only had, about there uh, only about seven or eight of them though. No, it wasn't. It was. It wasn't, it was a, uh, it, yeah, there was a, a top tier and a bottom tier. No, no, there um, wasn't. It was, it was pretty much. Does anybody remember how many people there were? Sixteen. There were sixteen. Were there? Seventeen. Seventeen. Yeah. Okay, uh, but uh, were they arguing like this uh, with Trump, or was it worse? Uh, I can't remember. All I know is Trump, Trump was always insulting them by calling them little, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Little Marco. Well, yeah, now, I, I, what I can hardly wait for uh, this no, year uh, are the uh, is the Republican debates. I uh, is any uh, one or two people said they were going to run against them, but I don't. I haven't heard a word from those people. I think it'd be really funny if they had a Republican debate and the only person there was Trump. <laughs> well, he'd do a good job. And he keep he come up with names for himself. You know, yeah. I mean. Mm -hmm. um, but um, that would be funny. Well, yeah. no, he would say to the newscaster, uh, "I think you're bleeding from the, you know, whatever." It is. From the Vijay <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's it. I all I'm saying is, is it, it's it's up to the voting populace uh, to pick their candidate for the Democrats. I hope they make a good choice. I think there were several there who could give Trump a good run for his money. I think Kamala Harris is one. Uh, after tonight, Buttigieg, 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 Mayor Pete. Yeah, he didn't I, do too well. He was no. preoccupied. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I think, you know, uh, Elizabeth Warren certainly should be in there. I don't think she could win it, okay? Uh, I, I, you know, it's a matter of you're going up against Trump, and somebody's got to be able to go up against Trump. Kamala Harris could take him, could take him on, could really take him on, wouldn't let him get away with anything. I don't know. Because she's got uh, her, her positions are ones that Trump can attack, uh, that his base would go after uh, yeah, but his and, and base, not agree with her position. Let's be honest. His base is only somewhere in the neighborhood of 40%. Well, that's what he had when he won. No. No. Yeah, much more. Well, he had that. less, actually, maybe. But, but his, his, oh. his base, is maybe, maybe his base is even less than that, maybe in the 30s somewhere. So, you know, and, and whoever runs for the Democrats is only in the 30s somewhere. It's the, that middle ground that's got to be convinced. Yeah. And they could go either yeah. way and make the election. You may as well ask all the rest of them to just make their vote now and go home. Well, it, it's those other ones that are going to make the difference, and they're the ones who have to be convinced, and they're the ones that elect presidents. I think it was Harris that was saying that uh, the, the economy isn't good. Or maybe it wasn't Harris, but uh, you know they were trying to no. say that the Trump no, economy no, no, wasn't no, good. Well, they are going to have a no, hard time no, with that. Well, no, they're not, not going to no, have a hard time. No, they're not. If somebody doesn't look, the economy is only good. If he says it's good, it's not good because he says so. It's good because it's good for you. And if it isn't right. good well, for you, yeah. then you're not she, gonna she believe said, it. You know, it's, it's good, but people don't have stocks. So the stock market is good, but if you don't own stocks, it's not right. so good. Right, you know? no, and, and, uh, I, and, I, and I, excuse me for that loud music there. Uh, no, but that, that's absolutely correct though. It, it, it's all subjective. If you've got a job, then the, it's good. If you don't right. have a job, it's not good. And if her you, point was that people have three jobs, not one. 
It's good, yeah. and they won't have any time to vote Democratic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I don't, I don't know the, you know, and he could live and die by the economy. You don't know what it's going to be a year and a half next now. year. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So you know, I wouldn't put all my. That's what I like about that. Buttigieg's uh, uh, closing statements. He says he, he said. We don't know what he's going to screw up between now and the end of his term, so I can't really... <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Anyway, uh, listen, uh, that's it for tonight. Uh, uh, we really appreciate your, uh, your participation. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Tony. Thank you very much, Charlie. Thank you very much, uh, 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 oh boy, my mind is Kevin. And uh, thank you very much. What's your name again, the guy in the bottom there? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Asshole. That's it. That's it. Anyway, why don't you give a big wave goodbye, everybody, and say, I'll wave back, okay? That's our citizens panel for tonight. Let me get rid of them uh, as we get the hell out of here and make uh, the phones available for the next program that's coming up, which is, of course, The Intersection with Jack Bishop. We hope you'll all be staying tuned for that. Meanwhile, I'm going to go away for about the next 22 hours. Uh, tomorrow night at 9.30, it's uh, the, ex- the exchange with um, uh, with uh, Damien Chaplin. And then once again, 10 o'clock tomorrow night, same time, same station in life, I'll be back here. And by the way, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Have a nice night.